Mm. You know, I think I shared it all so people want people want to watch. I think it's on mine. You shared it and then I okay. shared it. And yeah. It's showing we're live. We had some technical difficulties, everyone. So apologies for the delay, but fortunately we're only delayed by about a minute or two here. So welcome to this evening's live cast. I'll give people a minute or so to find us. And while I'm doing that, I see you shared you're about to go live, Lace. I will yeah. bounce it over on my personal page and tag you. So uh, sometimes we do these live casts and people are like, where are we finding you again? And they find us sooner or later. Oh, yeah. Okay. So sharing it on my personal page, then we'll get started. So good evening and welcome, everybody, to tonight's live cast sponsored by Mindful Ohio and the Institute for Creative Mindfulness. I'm Jamie Marich, and I am delighted to be joined tonight by probably one of my favorite people in the world, Blaze Harris. And I first met Blaze through his videos. Uh, Blaze is a firefighter in the fire service. And one of our ICMT members, Paula Lavacott, showed me his fire safety videos where he raps. And that's where I learned valuable safety tips like get low and go and close before you doze. And <laughs> I've learned more about fire safety watching Blaze on YouTube than I think I have my whole life. And then I had the good fortune of being able to train Blaze in EMDR therapy. And I've just been very inspired by his passion and his advocacy for really promoting the value of mental health counseling, specifically amongst black males. And that's what we'll be really focusing on tonight is this topic of black men feel. And uh, you are such an ambassador for that. And I thank you so much for joining me tonight on the livecast. Well, thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. I consider it a tremendous honor. Uh, so I guess my first question for you is just how you doing with everything that has been happening since George Floyd's death? <laughs> um, I'm I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've I've been extremely angry uh, mm -hmm. about what's been going on. I'm frustrated uh, and tired. You know, just dealing with it, and it's just like just having having the the conversations that I've been having lately has been has been encouraging, but also discouraging as well. So it gets kind of tough. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to navigate those worlds because. For me, I have to be objective and I have to take my emotions out of it when responding to people. Because if I'm not objective, if my emotions aren't taken out of it, I'm seen as the angry black man. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I want to portray. I want to be able to keep myself in check. So when I can talk to people, I'm speaking of a place of facts or my experiences. I don't want to be like, no, you're wrong. You should, I don't want to be like that because then that's going to turn people off. Mm. So working through trying to um, not internalize uh, mm -hmm. how I feel about things where I can actually just get to a space where I'm comfortable, you know, just talking in general to anybody. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. I would imagine the feelings are still there. Yes, they don't easily, they don't just go away. <laughs> they don't just go away. That's, um, that's one of the things that I'm thankful for having my own therapy and having my own coping mechanisms and my own coping skills to actually be able to work through them. A lot of us don't. Mm -hmm. And we just push it down and push it down and push it down and push it down. And then all of a sudden it explodes. Mm -hmm. And when it explodes, it's, it's never good. It's never, it's never in a great way. It's always in a way where it's yelling, it's screaming. It might be, you know, just uh, misdirected anger at someone else. And mm -hmm. it usually happens at the most inopportune times right. too. So, and that's, it's, it's tough. It gets tough. Yeah. So I know you and I have personally talked about this issue of what is often called tone policing. Mm. Um, and, and I know your experience with it has been different than mine, but I have experienced it to an extent mm -hmm. where if I show too much emotions, especially in academic settings, or if I'm mm -hmm. trying to convey a point, there can be the sense of you're getting too emotional and people don't listen to you. But I think what's happening now is maybe answering the question, could it be that we've not been getting emotional enough? 
Hmm. <laughs> well, I think um, hmm, that's tough to answer because I think it could, uh, yes. <laughs> the short answer is yes. Uh, we haven't been emotional enough, but at the same time, you have to think about it. When we are emotional, when we, it's never considered passionate. Mm. You know, it's always considered, it's, it's, it's always comes off as anger or you're yeah. wrong or you, yeah. well, what about, what about this? And, right. and that's, and that's one of those things. And it's like, I can talk about this with, with my homeboys. Yeah. Okay. I can, I can pull down my, my, my mask and, you know, just deal with that. I talk to my homeboys, talk to my, the people in my circle and mm -hmm. I can be me and say how I want to say and not feel bad about the way I feel it. And I can't do this everywhere right. because I have, I have to, I have to, it's expected of me to be mm -hmm. a certain way. And yeah. I have to, I have to cater to that more often than not. Yeah. And I imagine that's where your experience is different than mine in that the automatic perception is that you're angry. Yeah. If you do show passion. Yes. Yes. And, that, and that's one of those things that's, that's really, it's really difficult. Like say for instance, I was talking to, I was talking to someone the other day, all right? So let's talk about um, guns, right? Second Amendment, that's your right. You can do what you want to do. You can have all of it. If somebody talks about taking your guns away from you or doing anything, you know, you can say what you want to say, how you want to say it, to whom you want to say it, and it's called passion, all right? I'm all for you having your guns. I, I don't own one. But I will fight with you for your right to have it because you know it's your right. But if I talk about how racism affects me, how I feel being a black man walking down the street, I can't say what I want to say, how I want to say it, to whoever I want to say it, because I'm angry or I'm making it up or it's not really that bad. It's not really an issue. Yeah. So it's never passion. You know, I, even though I'm passionate about equality, I'm passionate about being seen on the same level as everyone else, mm -hmm. but it's not going to come off that way. Mm -hmm. I've been trained to, I've been trained to, so you see what I'm doing. I, I it's, it's, it's so bad. It's like, I, I'm training myself to get myself in the right position so I won't offend you know, and that's and that's that sucks to have to be able to monitor what you say mm -hmm. so you won't hurt anybody else's feelings, even though the way you're feeling it, it, it makes it makes what I'm feeling seem less significant. Yeah, but because I'm worried that people aren't going to hear me. Yeah, I'm worried that people are not going to believe me mm -hmm. or people are going to just say I'm overreacting. Yeah. So, and that's, and that's the thing. So I have to be mindful. So I, I catch myself mm -hmm. and, I'm like, oh, oh. and then it's like, wait a minute, I can, I can, I'm allowed to have a voice because mm -hmm. I have one. And, and fortunately I'm in a position where when I talk or when I speak about anything, people listen. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I've been called, I've been called a bridge uh, by people in my circle because I know how to navigate the world. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that started at a young age, you know, being, mm -hmm. Being one of two or three black kids in a class full of white folks, yeah. you know, and I have to be able to speak and carry myself and be educated and to show these things. But the thing yeah. about it, if, if I speak and I'm articulate and I'm educated, I'm being a white boy. But then if I'm, if I speak, this is this white, the, the, the black folks think I'm being a white boy. But then if I also speak articulate and educated, but I got a little swag to me, oh man, you ain't black enough to do that coming from the white people. Mm -hmm. So where do I fit? And so I had to make my own, I had to make my own lane. Yeah. Well, I can, I'm a chameleon. I could talk to you about anything. I can fit yeah. in with any group. I'm just as comfortable going in. You, <laughs> I was telling somebody today, you can, I can go to a country club and line dance with people. I will go to Legends, which is a uh, which is an LGBTQ bar mm -hmm. uh, here, and then I can go to a, a club in the hood 
and be mm -hmm. fine at all sets. I don't yeah. have a problem with it because I treat people. You treat me good, I'm gonna treat you good. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. I treat I treat people, I don't care. I don't care where you're from. You're good to me, I'm gonna be good to you. But I also know how to, I know how to navigate those worlds and a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. But I, I also have to be mindful of the worlds that I step in. Yes. You know, I have to be mindful because I have to, I have to be, I have to play by the rules. Mm -hmm. I have to play by the rules. So if I break the rules, if I break the rules, it could be real bad for me. Mm -hmm. You know, if I if I break the rules, I could be hurt. I could be locked up. Yeah. I could I could be killed. Yeah. So I have to I have to follow the rules. And yeah. that's the line that I think a lot of black males have to have to do because if we don't, I mean you've seen it. You've seen it. Should have just comply. Yeah. You know, um, so it should have been. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, no. uh, yeah, I want to share with you what's coming up for me, and then get your response to it because so much of what you're saying, I have in common with you about this whole idea of being a bridge. But mm -hmm. I want to talk about what's resonating about what's not in common. So what we have in common is this being a bridge, living in between all these different worlds. Mm -hmm. Something that I have long said, because I am a very passionate person, yeah. is that if I chop people's heads off, they won't have ears to hear me. Like if I chew their heads off with my anger mm -hmm. or my passion, they won't have ears to hear me. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who has like lived in the middle ground most of my life, I still do passionately believe that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, even though we have that bridge building chameleon quality about us both the reality is your anger can get you killed and mine likely won't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not only that though not no it's it's not even my anger that can get me killed it's yeah that what can that's what can get me killed and and that's the thing that's it sucks i have to and i, I so i have to do so much to make myself appear unthreatening. Yeah. So, you know, let's all right, let's talk about therapy, right? Being a, so, being, a yeah. being a therapist, all right? I'm well aware that I am a unicorn in this field. <laughs> I have I a picture a, to prove it. You should. Yeah, I have a, yeah, I, I stand yeah. out just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I am a black male, mm -hmm. bald-headed, I got a little size to me, and I got some tattoos on me. A little bit, a few tattoos. Just, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> um, but I am a trigger for everybody. Mm. I'm a trigger for everybody. All right, say if I have a client who was sexually assaulted, right? Them coming to see me, I may remind them of their assaulter. You know, white woman who's afraid of black dudes. Oh, black mm -hmm. woman who's been abused by black men. Mm -hmm. oh. White men who think I'm less than them. Oh. Black men who think I think I'm better than them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's so many different things that I have to do. So I, I'm, I'm well aware of these things. I'm very well aware of what I can do and who I may represent to a lot of my clients. Right. Right? I, I, I remember an instance um, when I was interning uh, a <laughs> year and a half ago and a client came in, female client, a white client. You know, she had no problem with me sitting in there, right? She went back and told her boyfriend that I was in there. And he was uncomfortable with the big black guy sitting in the room with his girlfriend. Mm. You know, and those things, those are the things that I have to deal with. Those are the things that I have to see. All right. So my father, father of two, all right? With everything that's been going on, I I smile a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. My smile, it, I smile for one because I like doing it. I think it's pretty darn nice. Mm -hmm. But I also do it to make people feel safe, comfortable, you know, 
So, hey, I'm not going to try to take your purse. You know, I'm not going to try to get in your car. You know, I'm, hey, I'm just going to go grocery shopping just like you are. You know, I wear, if I'm going out to the grocery store or something like that, I wear something with my fire department gear on. It's You see the Maltese cross or something like that. So yeah. people will know I, I'm a good person. Hmm. You know, I have my badge hanging up. If I'm ever pulled over, I have my badge hanging up in my car. So they won't think that, and nobody will think that I'm a threat. Yeah. You know, I have my car seats in there. I hold my kids' hands. I, you know, I do all of these things to appear less threatening. Yeah. Why do I have to? Yeah. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to. Right. You know, and that's the thing. Is I, don't, I don't know many of my white friends who have to deal with it correct you know you know so and that's that's the thing i shouldn't have to make myself appear less threatening to anybody else but the reality is no matter how big i smile no matter how good of a person i am no matter how many degrees i have i could be the president of the united states and to somebody i'm still just another nigga And at the risk of sounding like a therapist, how does that make you feel, Blaze? Uh, it sucks. It sucks. But the, the thing about it, and and I've had this conversation with several other people. They ask me, Blaze, how do you stay so positive? Because that's what I try to say. I try to stay in positivity out right. there. I try to bring everybody up. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm all about love and happiness and everybody be peaceful. Mm -hmm. How do you stay so positive? It's just another Thursday to me. You late to the party. I've been dealing with this forever. Yeah. You know, so I, I know what it's like. I've been, man, I've been just another nigga for a long time. And I know I'm, I'm well aware that people are going to look at me differently just because. Mm -hmm. Now, I have done some amazing things in this world. And, you know, people know me for the good things that I do. And I think that's awesome. Right. I'm very awesome if I'm in uniform. Mm -hmm. What happens when I'm out of it? Yeah. You don't know who I am. You know, so that's the, that's some of the things that we have to be mindful of, you know, and it, it sucks. It sucks. But. We've been dealing with it forever, so we keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, but for me, I, I usually don't talk about politics. I don't do any of that stuff because I know what kind of divide it'll bring. But with the the with with Ahmaud Arbery and with George Floyd, I got tired of being quiet. Yeah. I got tired of being quiet. I did. And and, and it got to a point, it's just like, yo, do you see now? That's why I'm I'm upset. It's not I hate I hate what happened to him. Yeah. But what happened, what happened with George Floyd, it, it was a straw that brought the camels back. You know? And I think that's what a lot of people are dealing with now. That's why everybody's like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm getting tired of dealing with this. I'm getting tired of this happening. I'm getting tired of seeing this. And then what's, what's, what's great is we're not the only ones that's getting tired of it. Right. You know? Um, and that's, and that's, I'm, I'm encouraged by the conversations that I had, but but I'm that I'm having, but I'm also discouraged. I'm also discouraged because the people who want to have these conversations aren't the people that need to be brought to the table. The people who just see me as another nigga, those are the ones that need to be brought to the table, but they're not gonna come. Yeah. Because one, it's uncomfortable. Two, it's going to make them question who they are. Mm -hmm. And oh well, maybe well, I'm not racist, but you know, I have such and such, you know, I, you know, I got a black friend, mm -hmm. my little African American over there, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the thing. And it's like, it's, it's, I can have this conversation with people who see the issue and want to make it better, want to make change. And I'm all about, if you, if we can have a conversation and we don't agree, I'm not going to hate you. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to, I'm still going to talk to you just like, you know, just like I normally do. Mm -hmm. But, but don't negate what I feel. Don't try to tell me how to feel. 
don't tell me that I'm making it up when I am pleading with you. I am being vulnerable with you. I am pouring my heart out to you and telling you how I feel and what this does to me. Don't talk to me about black on black crime. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me about, you know, Chicago. I don't live in Chicago. I'm talking about what's going on about right here. And black on black crime is going to happen in the predominantly black neighborhoods. We don't talk about white on white crime. And then you see the other people, you see all these posts talking about how people that go through and, and it, they're these, they, they're these, these I, I'll call them counter posters, right? So, okay, well, uh, this, this guy was killed uh, by this black man. Where's the outrage? Or, or police kill more white people than black people. Where's the outrage? I'm almost cussed. <laughs> uh, speak freely. <laughs> All right. So, and this is like, it was like, well, where's the outrage? Bitch, where your house rage at? Why ain't yeah. you mad? You're not yeah. mad? You're okay with that? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not okay with it. I'm just, I'm just as mad. I don't think. I think that everybody should get along, everybody should get along, hold hands, go sing and dance and do everything together. I'm all about that, all right? I hate seeing people hurt. I don't want people hurt. I'm just as mad as about, I'm just as mad as about white people dying as I am about black people dying, all right? But the thing about it is, and, 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 and being a first responder, I'm, I'm going all around. Being a first responder, okay. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, I. I'm thankful for the police. I work, we work hand in hand with the police. You know, I could not be a police officer. I know the things that they have to deal with. And I'm not saying that, I'm not saying, oh, police are bad. I'm not, because the fact of the matter is we need police. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome that they have, I have some great friends with police. I support them 150%. But I also believe in accountability, Correct. right? Yeah. You know, I think that if you see something bad happen, you should be held accountable. Just like if you see me do something bad, you're going to hold me accountable to it, mm -hmm. right? If I go to a fire, if I go to a fire, right, and 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 I do something that is totally unsafe and I get somebody hurt, and it could have been, a, it's preventable because I know my job and I know what I'm supposed to do, all right? You're going to hold me accountable for the, what I did because that could have cost somebody their life, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's, that's what it is. I think I'm all for the police. I love it. Let's work together. Let's get to a common cause. I don't think that police are bad. I don't think all white people are bad. I don't think all black people are bad. You know, and I think that if we actually sat down and talk about the issues and try to figure out and get on the same page, mm -hmm. then a whole lot of stuff would be solved. Yeah. But again, you, you can't get those people who need to be at the table to the table. So I think the question I have, and you know, you're a trauma therapist, you would have this insight is what keeps those people from coming to the table in your experience? <laughs> Somebody told me once, everything is trauma. <laughs> 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 um, Wherever you know, did you learn that? <laughs> you know, a little birdie told me a couple times. <laughs> um, I think that a lot of us, we go through things as you as youngsters as whatever all this stuff is stored right and we know that if we never deal with it mm -hmm. it's, it's going to come out in present day yeah. you know mm -hmm. I, and i think the reason why that conversation so those people who need to be at the table don't come to the table is because they don't think it's another way mm -hmm. and i think they've been taught so many i think that people have been taught to stay in their ways and are afraid to come out same thing, it's like, you know, with us, it's like for the longest time, man, I I only thought I had one way of thinking. Because okay. my grandma told me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I did everything the way that she wanted me to. Right? Until I started thinking for myself. You know, my grandma, my grandma is one of the most amazing women ever. Mm -hmm. right? She made me who I am today. Right? Mm -hmm. And I love her for it. And she and I have had this conversation. We've had this conversation a couple of times, right? And she, I was raised with no love, right? I know I was never told I love you until I was uh, an adult, right? Mm -hmm. 
So when you're never told, I love you, but you are smacked upside the head if you do something wrong, you're spanked, mm-hmm. you get a whooping, you do all these things. And if you cry, man up. Mm-hmm. Crying for. Them. You know, those things are internalized. Okay. And so if if I'm never told I love you, if I'm never hugged or told good job or I'm proud of you, that affects me. And Paula will tell you that that affects me, that affected me, you know, not too long ago. And that's how that's how these things go. So we internalize these things, right? So it was I would never I never knew how to show love. I thought that the only way that you could show somebody that you love them um, or a woman that you know how to love them is by sex because that's all you saw. You know, oh, they really love her, so that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't know about giving flowers and taking people out to date and doing all these things and all this stuff because I was never taught that. You know, I didn't know that you had to ask the father of the person that you're trying to marry for permission because I was never taught that. No, no dudes were around. I had no father around. It was just my grandma. You know, and that's the thing. And so I challenged myself. I was like, I am going to teach my kids. I'm going to raise my kids with the lessons that my grandma taught me, but I'm going to do it my way. Mm. You know, I tell my kids I love them every chance I get. Yeah. I don't just I don't just tell them. I show them. I hug them. I tell them that I'm proud of them as often as I possibly can, especially when they do things great or do things that they couldn't do before and they excel. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm proud of you, dude. Girl, I was like, don't give me a high 10. Way to go, baby. I'm so proud. I love doing that. But I never was, if I just because I never got it doesn't mean I can't give it. Right. You know? So I try to do that and I try to show that stuff off. Um, and I think that a lot of black males fall into that same category. We were never taught how to express our feelings. We were allowed to be, we were allowed, we, we weren't allowed to be sad. Okay. Man up. We're being a bitch. Mm-hmm. You know, man up. Okay, we could be angry, but we got to control our anger. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. What do we do with it? What do we do when we push it down? All right. If you have problems, you got two options: suck it up, pray about it. Ain't no in between. Those are the only two things you got. Right. We were never taught how to deal with our emotions because we are. We came up. I don't know about a lot of people. But I had to, I had brothers and sisters and cousins who was living with us. Grandma working, we're supposed to be taking care of them. Want no time for love. And they grew up in a different time. They had to go work on the farm. Want no time for love. They grew up in the in, in the 40s and the 50s and all of this stuff. Different time. You know, and that's and that's different. So if you don't know how to, if you don't know how to show those things, what can you expect when you get older? And, and if you don't think that there is another way, then obviously you're going to keep that bad stuff that you've experienced with you until somebody shows you different or opens your eyes and show you there's another way to get things done. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think you are a prime example of showing people that there is another way, whether it's in the work you do as a counseling professional, as a mental health advocate. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you've planted seeds in places where maybe you haven't realized that you have? I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Especially for me, like, (laughs) so a big thing in the fire service, at least in my experience. Okay, so for one, I didn't know that Black people could be firefighters. Hmm. Where I'm from, it won't won't any. Won't any Hmm. any firefighters that look like me. And so when we got hired, when I got hired, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna make a difference. And I saw several other, you know, black dudes in there with me. I was like, oh shoot, we about to, you know, it's about to be a good thing. And we get online and you go and you are the only person to call at your station. And you look around and you're like, okay, I'm a chameleon, I could do this, ain't no problem. But then you see, different types of microaggressions that are seen at the station and you have to sit there and take it Mm -hmm. okay 
Because if you try to explain it, why you're upset, oh, it ain't nothing like that. You're thinking too much, right? And, and, and kind of like the, the, the fire service, we're taught, you know, in the beginning, you know, you don't have time for emotions because if you're emotional now, five minutes later, you might be running a different call. You see something different. You got to you leave your <laughs> leave your home problems at home. Mm-hmm. As soon as you get to the fire station, you leave your problems at the door. Your home problems do not go through the fire station threshold. If you got problems at work, you don't take that home. Mm-hmm. Right? So those are the things. So regardless of if you see, you know, kids might run in the car wreck, um, you see somebody burn up in a fire, you know, you lose somebody that you were doing chest compressions on. You're supposed to internalize that. You're not supposed to talk about it. Right? So those are the things. That, and how, how realistic is that? Mm-hmm. It's not. All right now, think about you dealing with all of this, right? And you deal with some people on your crew who do some slick stuff. Mm. All right, like I was calling a nigga by my captain to my face. Mm. Other people heard it, well, nothing done about it. I'm one of I'm <laughs> the only brother with a station with seven other white dudes. Who can I talk to about it at my station? How are you going to understand what that's like? Right? And again, if I bring it up, if I am passionate about how I feel about this stuff, and I tell you why I'm upset about it, it's not, again, it's not called passion. I'm angry. Right? With all the stuff that's been, let's see, okay. How about you go to a call and the person who called you to come help won't let you into the door because of what you look like? Who am I supposed to talk to about that? All right. Well, all this stuff with racism that we're seeing portrayed in the news, obviously people are going to have different views, right? For the most part, we can agree to disagree. Okay, what if somebody puts something that is so, I don't know, something so despicable that makes you feel uncomfortable coming to work? Mm-hmm. Who am I supposed to talk to about it? And then if I talk to a group of brothers who understand about, who understand what I'm feeling, oh, oh, y'all are plotting, y'all are planning. What happened if a bunch of white dudes got together? What would y'all think then? You do it anyway, don't you, buddy? Don't y'all go fishing and stuff together? It's it's things that we experience that we're not making up. And we don't have any outlets. We can't talk to our crews about it. Now, that's not all, that's not always the experience. Now, I had some cool ass captains. Now, I saw if you see something, I've seen something one day when somebody's watching some, some stuff that really offended me, and I said, "Captain, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't appreciate that, man. It's, you know, I don't want to see that because you're trying to, you're, you are, you are throwing a stereotype in my face, and you laughing about it because it's just funny to you, and to me, it sucks." This captain went and told the guy how I felt about it. And it's, it, he came and apologized. It was squashed. That's amazing. That's one of the things, that's, that's what I love, okay? Um, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be a brotherhood, be a brotherhood all the time. Brothers fight, right? Sisters fight. But you listen to each other and you make up and you try to find out what can we do to make this thing better the next time. Mm-hmm. listen listen to me listen to what I'm trying to tell you listen to what I am telling you how I'm feeling how that makes me feel this shit's hard enough already to admit that I got a problem but then if you tell me that what I'm feeling is, is not valid or what I'm feeling is it doesn't matter or I'm making it up or you deflect and you bring up some stuff that doesn't even 
that ain't even have nothing to do with what we're talking about, you think I'm gonna come talk to you about it again? No. So what I do, push it down, push it down, push it down. And then one day you come say some stuff to me that I don't like, what's gonna happen? I explode. And then what's, what's my reputation? He's angry, he has an attitude problem. We need to send him somewhere else. And then you got people who like to poke the bear. They do everything they can to get a rise out of it, you know? So, and, and it sucks. It's, a, it's an unfortunate truth. And people don't want to hear about it. So. Thank you for your vulnerability and sharing it. Uh, something that really struck me is just how many fucking problems are caused by us invalidating what people feel. Because it's uncomfortable, because it's uncomfortable for us receiving yeah. it to hear how we make people feel, yeah. and I mean a, a prime, um, you know, precept of at least how I teach trauma work is you got to validate people first, first yeah. and foremost. Yeah. I mean there may there may be a place to challenge, there may be a place to offer feedback, there may be a chance to get in there and do something, but if you don't do that in the spirit of validating, it's not yeah. going to do any good. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and and that's the thing is like you don't. I had a conversation with a friend from school. And I played, you know, we played sports together and everything like that. And I, when I first spoke about what happened with George Floyd, and I told him that I was upset, I was angry, and you know, it sucks that I have to be afraid about you know driving down the road. I have to be afraid, you know, <laughs> Jamie. I'm not. I'm not going to run around in my neighborhood with my hood on anymore. Mm -hmm. I damn sure ain't gonna go look in a uh, house that's being constructed anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, if I play with my Nerf guns with the kids, we're playing inside. You know, I'm not, my kid, my son's not gonna beat Samir Rice. I don't want that to happen. You know, I don't wanna be a my Arbery just looking at, you know, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want it to happen to my kid and the, the thing that's really messed up is that I have to have a conversation with my son that you don't have to have to have with yours. I have to have to talk with my kid about how to respond, about how to act, about where to go. You don't have to deal with that. And that's just not fair. That shit is not fair. You don't have to tell your kid how to dress when he goes out somewhere. You don't have to talk to your kid about the proper way to speak to people, right? Everybody's talking about, oh yeah, well, you know, George Floyd, we're still crying. We're still mad about Emmett Till. And that's the, that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's not, this was this like I said. This is the, this was the the straw that brought the camels back. It's been building, yo. It's been building. We've been dealing with this stuff. Y'all are just seeing it now. And the thing about it is, like, I, I saw this awesome picture, and it had you know icebergs. You know, you see the tip of the iceberg coming out of the water, but it's a shit ton of ice up under it. That's racism. You know, it's just, that's, that's what you just see. That's the stuff that you, you film. Imagine the stuff that's happening that hasn't been filmed. Imagine the stuff that's happened before we had cell phones. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. So we have to, we have to be mindful. I have to be so mindful of what I do, where I go, what I say, who I say it to. And I have to be objective. I have to take my emotions out of it. That's the only way that people listen. But the thing about it, change like this isn't going to happen because I'm talking about it. You're going to have to be the one. You know? People talk about, oh, why don't you, why don't, why don't you hear so much about, you know, people trying to stop the gang stuff, you know, in the neighborhoods? Man, why don't they try to stop drugs coming from the neighborhoods? Dude, back home, we got organizations just for that. Broad. Back home, it's fun residents organized against drugs. Mm -hmm. We're doing the work. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got organizations like Stand Up, Speak Out. Mm -hmm. 
The work is being done in the community. You know why you don't see it? Because you don't live there. Mm -hmm. Work is being done. How can you go on a mission trip to a different country and don't want to do stuff here? You know it's a problem here. (sighs) Ask me a question. Girl, made my made my made my bro person go up today. I told my. I'm grateful. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> not grateful that your blood pressure is up, but grateful for what you what you shared and and the challenge. So let me ask you point blank, because I mean, I heard very clearly change will happen when people like me speak up. Mm-hmm. How can I do better? What do you what would you like to see, especially white therapists do? Because I mean, we could talk about all white people, but. I mean, we're talking therapist to therapist here. You know, what would you like to see us do, feel, be? Have, don't be afraid to have the conversation. We tell people not that we tell people in therapy all the time, you know, you can say what you want to say here. You can do what you have to, you know, you can when you're in therapy, all the stays here. Mm-hmm. This is it. Be brave enough to have those conversations. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, I've been I've been lucky that we're having conversations like that now. People are asking questions, and the 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 conversation and the dialogue that's happening that I've been having, like I said, I've been encouraged by it because people know that that's a problem. They're listening to me. They're not trying to invalidate what I'm feeling. They're not deflecting. They're sitting there and mm-hmm. listen. Sometimes people just need to shut the fuck up and listen to what the hell we have to say. Mm-hmm. That's it, you know. And I and I think that's I think that's that's what needs to happen. Don't try to mm-hmm. fix me. Don't try yeah. to, you know, don't try to fix it. It's not going to happen overnight. Right. And the thing about it, if you want to have these conversations now, the conversations that we're having right now, awesome. It's six months down the road that I'm concerned about. Yeah. You know, don't just, don't just talk about it, be about it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, so as therapists, listen, that's what we do anyway. Mm-hmm. Do we get do we give advice? Nope. Not supposed listen, to. Not supposed to. Mm-hmm. We listen, right? Mm-hmm. So listen. Be not only that. If you see some 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 suspect stuff going on, call them out. Yeah. I'm loving I'm loving seeing my friends call other people out. Boy, that is good to me. Mm-hmm. Even because I can't. Mm-hmm. I can't. You know, when that that the interaction that I had with my friend from school, I didn't say I didn't have to say a word. I, I listened to what he said and had to I now I validated what he was feeling. I didn't take away what he was from what he was feeling. Mm-hmm. All right. I had <laughs> I have my my homegirl, I have a homegirl uh who went right for the dag on knees and just this cup. Mm-hmm. And she messaged me, she's like, Blaze. I know that you ain't going to do that, but I'm going to do it for you. Because <laughs> I will not stand for that. I'm not going to stand. And then I had a homeboy who's a, it's a PhD. You know, he's, he's, he's my mentor. Mm-hmm. And he did the same thing. And he, boy, he broke it down. I love it when educated people make people feel small sometimes. I tell you what, it's, it's, it's good to me. And it just went right over his damn head. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is, he and I can agree to disagree. Right. But the thing about it, he's not going to be the person that's going to change because he's set in how he thinks. Mm -hmm. So and he thinks that his way is the right way. And who who am I to say otherwise? Which is a tricky one. Yeah, that was a good breath, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think because I think a lot of it, what it, what it brought up for me is how, how I was raised. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I was raised in an environment where mm, people yeah. thought they weren't racist because we watched Roots, right? And yeah. you know, learn, learn, learn about our history and all of this, but it's a thing of the past and let's leave it in the past. And, you yeah. know, I also had a, a person who raised me who listened to Rush Limbaugh constantly. So I was indoctrinated with everything that that came with as well yeah and I I mean and I share this only to say that the way I was raised would have suggested that I would have turned out differently than I did 
And the reality is people can, I think people can change. I think the younger you can get Mm -hmm. them, the better, (laughs) the -hmm. younger that people can meet folks of different backgrounds. And for me, it really happened in high school and college. I mean, the best gift I was ever given was to go to the public high school, Catholic grade school, because I got to meet people from different sides of town and realize, oh, all these stories are being told aren't true. Right. Right. So I don't have answers. I mean, I, I don't pretend to have answers other than it's very clear to me that continuing to plant those seeds and to listen to others is what I have to do. And yeah. it can be, it can, it can be very tricky. Cause I know with a lot of fellow white folks, I, I teeter that line between if I chop their heads off, they're not going to hear me. Right. But I'm also not going to let shit slide either. Girl, you better speak that, speak that man. <laughs> and, and, so, I, 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 yeah. and I think that's where, that's where something that, you know, I, I do my best to try not to let, I let, I let shit slide a lot. Mm-hmm. But again, it's because I feel like I have to, you know, um, and, and it, it sucks. Um, but I also feel like I have to keep a lot inside, you know, because I'm supposed to, you know, when I, when I went through and you, we've talked about my story, but I know a lot of people don't know, it. you know, um, with my divorce, you know, I hit that rock bottom. I helped deal with depression. All right. Now I could have went and told my family, but I was so worried about looking weak and worried about what they were going to think and them telling me I'm going to go to hell and you know, just worried about what I was going to look like. And I got tired of feeling so bad. I just wanted that pain to stop. So I had that suicide attempt. Okay. Now, now a lot of people will probably be surprised. That wasn't my first one. My first one happened in high school. I was 17, 17 years old, being the chameleon, being the, 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 <laughs> Being the black dude to act like a white boy, but it's not black enough. You know, although I, I mean, I was super popular. I was Mr. Popular, right? Because I know how to navigate the things. I, you know, treat people nice. I was always cool. But my mask was impeccable. My mask was impeccable because I was always smiling. Mm-hmm. You know, football captain, track captain, all these accolades, student council, or class president, all this stuff. Everything was great, right? On the outside. On the inside, I was screaming for help. I was screaming for help because I didn't know who I was. And I got tired of, I got tired of flip-flopping. You know, I got tired of, I got tired of trying to be black enough. I got tired of not trying to be a white boy. I got tired. I was torn. And it was, it, it got to be too much. And then everybody expected me to do so well. And places, you're, you're different. You're supposed to make it. You're going to go somewhere and do all these things. And, oh, you're, you're gonna, it's going to be great. And I had the weight of the world on my shoulders. And I didn't have any way to ask for help. I didn't have anybody to let that out. I didn't know how to talk about it because I was never taught. And I was just like, I know how to do this. And my brother stopped me. And I, I'll forever be thankful for that. Right? And then the same thing happened with depression. Is it's like, I didn't know I could hit rock bottom. I didn't know I could go to therapy. You know? Because we're taught, oh, that's what white folks do. We don't go there. We don't tell our business to nobody. Now, how the hell is she going to know what you're dealing with anyway? And that's the thing. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know that we can go to therapy. We don't know where to look for therapists. We don't know who therapists are in our communities. We don't know the insurance space for stuff. We don't know that you can go see a therapist with Medicaid. Sometimes you can pay out of pocket if you need to. We don't know those things. We don't know that it's okay to talk about, look, my shirt says therapy is dope as fuck because it is. Amen. <laughs> it is. And that's the thing is, it's like if I, I, if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be where I am now. And the thing about it is black people need it. White people need it. First responders need it. 
it's great because we have to have a way to have that release because we don't have to, we don't have to keep that shit stored inside. We can let this stuff out. We can be emotional. We can be vulnerable. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength to get that help. So get it. Sorry, I got on a little bit of a pedestal. Nothing yeah. to be sorry about. You're talking to the <laughs> you're talking to the queen of soapboxes here. So right, you're in right, you're right. in you're in good company. Oh, I mean, just just so much gold here in this conversation we've had. Um, and and I, I think maybe just a final question or two would be around what would you say to a person of color, specifically a black man, mm-hmm. who needs the kind of help that you're talking about, and there is that barrier, be it real or perceived. Bro, I got you. I got you. You can talk about it. Mm -hmm. You can say as much or as little as you want. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to judge you. You can come to me. You can talk to me. I got you. And I'm a hugger anyway. So... I'm gonna I'm I'm bring them in. I'm gonna bring them in for the hug, and that's the thing, man. It's it's okay. It's okay for you to talk about. It. It's okay for you to let this shit out. You don't have to do it by yourself because you're not alone. Mm-hmm. You're not alone. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been to rock bottom, but you know what? I know how to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Let me help you. Let me get you there. You know because what you've been doing ain't been working. Let's try a different way. I got you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Just, just, I mean, with, and, it, and it's not just like a, a general statement, like you've accomplished so much in life because you have, yet I'm proud of you for speaking out and being vulnerable because I think, I think that is the greatest sign of what it means to be an advocate, what it means to be a therapist in the truest sense Mm -hmm. is to be willing to show our own vulnerability and use it to allow us to help walk others home. And you're doing that. I mean, I just, I just know that that's what you're about and I appreciate that. So you practice at, in case people are watching this from <laughs> North Carolina and want to work with you. Yeah, 180 Counseling in Raleigh. I'm in, in the Raleigh, Raleigh office. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. And any other public social media people can use to connect with you at? I am on Instagram at Blazo, B-L-A-I-Z-O 909. I'm also on that on TikTok. <laughs> Wait, okay. So tell me, I want your opinion as my friend. So I've been told today that I have to get a TikTok because you know I do all the other social media, but I don't have a TikTok yet. Do you think I need one? Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> my my mine is kind of stale right now. I mean, with mm-hmm. doing doing the fire service full time, therapy part time, single mm-hmm. dad, kids, and all that stuff. I can't do it as much as I want. But, you know, um, it's there. I'm also on YouTube at Blaze Harris 909, I think is what it is. So if you start, you're going to see this face on YouTube. <laughs> you go put it in. <laughs> so It's um, a treat. Right, let me just yeah. tell you, especially the, the, the fire safety wraps, the parodies that you've done or the it's just it's just fabulous. So, Blaze, thank you so much for being with us tonight on Facebook Live. Thank you so much for having me.